Let's go ahead and get started. I will now call to order the meeting of the Omaha Planning Board. The planning board members that are here today are Sidney Franklin, Jeff Moore, Patrick Morris, Michael Pate, Jorge Sotolongo, Dave Rosacker, Vice Chair, and I am Greg Rosenbaum, Chairman. Members of the city staff that are in attendance today are Dave Fanslaw, Planning Director, Eric England, Assistant Planning Director, Mike Carter, Current Planning Manager, Robert LaRocco, Planning Board Administrator, Jennifer Taylor of the City Law Department, and Debbie Hightower is our Recording Secretary. Our rules of procedure are as follows. Notice of this hearing has been published. Copies of today's agenda are located on the table in front of us. You are welcome to come down and pick one up. The cases on the consent agenda will be heard first. Consent cases have been recommended for layover or approval, have already been heard or are perceived by the planning board to be non-controversial, therefore will be read and voted on without the opportunity for your testimony. If you wish to testify, you may remove the case from the consent agenda. When each consent case is read, I will ask if anyone wants the case removed. If you do, please stand up and say so, and the case will be removed. This case will then be heard in the order in which it appears on the regular agenda after we go through the consent cases. When the case is heard, you'll have the opportunity to come to the podium Clearly state your name and address and give your testimony at that time. When hearing cases on the regular agenda, the board will first hear from the applicant. After, after the applicant states their case, we'll hear from the proponents and then we will hear from the opponents. After both sides are heard, the public hearing will be closed and no additional testimony will be permitted unless a board member requests additional information. When at the podium, please clearly state your name, address, and whom you are representing for the record. Your testimony is very important to us. In the interest of time and courtesy to others, please be short and to the point. We will try to limit each case to 10 minutes. Those directly involved in the case, please speak first. We request that large groups select a spokesperson to represent that group therefore eliminating repetitive testimony. When giving testimony, please provide new information and try not to repeat what has been previously said. We do ask that all speakers and others be treated with courtesy and with respect. In that regard, please remain silent while seated and please turn off your cell phones. Our decision to approve, deny, or continue a case made here today will be forwarded to the City Council for another public hearing and final disposition by the City Council. Conditional use permits are an exception to this rule. The Board's decision made here today on conditional use permits are final and not forwarded to the City Council. Lastly, upon the advice of the Law Department, all communications to the Board members from attorneys or other interested parties should be transmitted through the Planning Department so that they are made a part of the public record. The department will then transmit all that information to the board as well as to the rest of the public. A current copy of the Nebraska Open Meetings Act can be found in a white binder in this room. And there are no changes to the consent agenda, so I'm gonna get started reading the consent cases. Again, if you want the case removed, please stand up and we'll remove it. Agenda item number nine, case C12-22-77, applicant John P. Farrell. It is on for approval. Request preliminary and final plat approval of Harris Edition, a minor plat outside city limits with a waiver to section 5384D lot frontage, location northwest of North Post Road and 40th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 10, case C10-21-47, C12-21-48, applicant, Woodsonia 168 State LLC. It is on for approval. Request revised preliminary plat approval of the Hill, a subdivision outside city limits, a portion of which is proposed as a cluster subdivision with rezoning from AG to DR, R4, R5, R6, and MU. Location, 
northeast of 168 in state. Anyone wish to have this removed? Eric, did you want to handle this? Yes, we can coordinate. Um, why don't you come down? I'll give you my business card. And, um, but yeah, we can get you all the info in the, in the whole case file. Okay. Yep. Hey, come on down. Yeah, oh, just come on down now. Or Larry can talk to you. Okay, sir. So we're going to leave it on consent, correct? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> 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 uh, continuing on, agenda item number 11, case C10-22-80, C12-22-81, applicant Faithful Realty LLC, it is on for approval, request preliminary and final plat approval of Warren Place, a minor plat inside city limits with rezoning from GC to CC, along with approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district. Location, northeast of 42nd and L Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, continue on. The case, agenda item number 13, case C10-22-83, C12-22-84. Applicant, Mil Military and 138 Smart Development, LLC. It is on for approval. Request preliminary plat approval of Westbrook Hills, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to AG, DR and R5. Location, 13712 Military Road. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, agenda item number 14, case C10-22-85, applicant, Sandra Jimerson. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GI to R5, location 1802 Sailor Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 15, case C10-22-86. Applicant Robert Jimerson, it is on for approval. Request rezoning from GI to R5, location 1728 Sailor Street. Does anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 16, case C10-22-87. <clears throat> Applicant Javier Cartier, hope I said that right, uh, approve, is on for approval. Request rezoning from R3 to R4, location 13705 Corby Street. Anyone, anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 17, case C10-22-88. Applicant, Sonia Marcias, it is on, uh, it is, uh, I'm sorry, Sonia Mar G. Marcias, SM Estate, LLC. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from GC to R5 with approval of the major commercial corridor overlay district. Location, 3911 L Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, agenda item number 18, case C10-22-89, applicant Gregory Maylock, GAM3 Holdings, LLC. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from R7 to CC. Property is located within a major commercial corridor overlay district. Location 6060 Northwest Radial Highway. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item number 19, case C10-22-90. Applicant, Timothy Garnett. It is on for approval. Request, rezoning from R3 and R4 to R4. Location, 13545 Miami Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none. Agenda item number 20, case C10-1-240, applicant Joshua Hannum, JEDM Holdings, LLC. It is on for approval. Request approval of a major amendment to the mixed-use development agreement for Pine Creek. Location, northwest of 156th and Reynolds Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? 
Seeing none, agenda item number 21, case C10-22-91, C12-22-92. Applicant, Mount Moriah Missionary Baptist Church. It is on for approval. Request rezoning from R5 to NBD with approval of a planned unit redevelopment overlay district. Location, 2602 North 24th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, agenda item number 23, KC8-22-93, applicant, new singular wireless PCS LLC. It is on for approval. Request, approval of a special use permit to allow a broadcast tower in the DR district, along with a waiver to section 55108 height to allow a 100 foot tall tower. Property is located within the flood fringe overlay district. Location, 4615 North 120th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none. Agenda item, agenda item number 27, case C7-22-100, C10-22-99. Applicant, Chad Ellington. It, uh, R and A builders, it is on for approval. Request, approval of a conditional use permit to allow auto sales in the NBD with approval of the area of civic importance overlay district. Location, 8505 North 30th Street. Anyone wish to have this removed? Seeing none, and finally, agenda item number 28, case C14-22-101. Applicant Planning Board, it is on for approval. Request, vacation of a portion of North 39th Street and a portion of Alley right, right of Way abutting Lot 6, 10, and the south 25 feet of Lot 5, Block 4, Kilby Place Addition. Anyone wish to have this removed? Okay, seeing none, for those items that are on consent for approval, do we have a motion? Motion to approve cases number 9, 10, 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 23, 27, and 28. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, will you please record the vote? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approve 7 0. Okay. There are no items on for layover if you were here for any of the consent cases no further action will be taken here today you are welcome to stay or you are welcome to leave either one so we'll get started with the regular agenda the first three cases are administrative only there will be no opportunity for public hearing agenda item number one kc10-8-220 C12-8-221, applicant BHI Development Inc. request final plat approval of Kensington Park, lots three through 15, out lots A through C, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to DR, R6 and MU. Location, Northwest to 204th and Q Streets. Eric. Yeah, so this is the third phase final <coughs> plat, although the first, Two phases have been uh, quite some time back in 2009, but we have had recent revised preliminary plat action before Planning Board and City Council. Um, this proposal was for three outlots in 13 lots. Uh, the overall site includes 92 acres and 18 mixed-use lots. Um, there are some items that still need to be coordinated with city staff and submitted, um, including revised paving plan and draft subdivision agreement, an updated wetland analysis specifically as it applies to lot three, but also the other lots, um, and some additional mixed use uh, modifications to the plan and agreement. So for this reason, staff is recommending layover. Okay, any additional comments, questions from the board? Do we have a motion? Move to layover. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, will you please record the vote? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? 
Yes. Mr. Chair. Yes. Approved seven zero. Agenda item number two, case C10-21-103, C12-21-104. <clears throat> Applicant M180 LLC request final plat approval of Maple 180, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from AG to DR and MU. Location, northeast of 180th Street and West Maple Road. Eric. Yeah, so this is the final plat uh, for the entirety of Maple 180. Uh, it includes seven mixed use lots, four out lots within 28 acres. The plant, um, City Council approved the preliminary plat last June uh, 29th, 2021, that included a waiver of the green corner. Um, however, we are recommending layover of this final plat um, due to there being additional items that need to be corrected and um, modified relating to the mixed use development agreement and plan, uh, which includes pedestrian oriented open space needs to be coordinated with city staff, additional right of way for street B and some additional sidewalk connections. So staff is recommending layover. Comments or questions from the board? Do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sodalongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Agenda item number three, case C 10 20 252. C 12 20 253. Applicant? Jeffrey A. Silver, CIC Land 3 LLC, request final plat approval of Hartwood Residences, a subdivision outside city limits with rezoning from R4 to R5, location northwest of Pacific Street and Applied Parkway. Eric? Yeah, so this final plat, Hartwood Residences, uh, there was a previous version that came to the planning board uh, previously, however, that did not advance to city council. Um, that original plat had 235 residential lots. That number has been reduced to 222. So we felt that change was sufficient enough that it should come back to the planning board. Um, the proposed final plat is consistent with the approved preliminary plat. There is an NC overlay uh, district plan that will accompany the final plat to city council. Staff is recommending approval of the rezoning from R4 to R5. Approval of the final plat subject to conditions of preliminary plat approval and submittal of an acceptable subdivision agreement prior to City Council. Okay. Any questions or comments? Do we have a motion? I move approval of the rezoning from R4 to R5 and approval of the final plat subject to the conditions of the preliminary plat <laughs> approval and submittal of an acceptable final subdivision agreement prior, prior to forwarding the request on to City Council. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sodalongo? Yes. Grosshacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Uh, that ends our administrative part. We'll be moving into the public hearing. Agenda item number four, case C3 19 88. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha request approval of a major amendment to the 2019 Consolidated Action Plan. Location, City of Omaha and the Three Mile Extraterritorial Jurisdiction. And uh, uh, Melissa, you're up. Good afternoon, Alyssa Selachik, City Planning Department. And I'm here to discuss a substantial or a major amendment to the 2019 Consolidated Plan. Uh, this particular proposal requests a reallocation of $2,010,184 in CDBG CV3 funds, which is CARES Act funding, from Matches Short-Term Rental Assistance Program to a Family Housing Advisory Services Short-Term Rental Assistance Program. Uh, this part of the COVID-19 funding um, this is part of the COVID-19 funding awarded to the City of Omaha. It's the third round specifically of CARES Act funding, which was designated for rental assistance only. Um, and so the proposal here requests a reallocation of that full CV3 award. Um, the amendment itself uh, is a change in the administrative providers, the grant recipients of the funding, but it doesn't change the activity the proposed number of beneficiaries or the specific funding amount for rental assistance. So staff do recommend approval of this item and I am available to answer any questions that you may have. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. 
Any other proponents? Seeing none, any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Additional comments, questions from the board? Eric, did you want to add anything? No, just recommend approval. Okay, do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Hey? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Agenda item number five, case C3 22 73, applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. Request approval of the South Omaha Spring Lake CRA location, an area generally, generally bound by Interstate 80 to the north, F Street and Spring Lake Drive to the south, 13th Street to the east, and 24th Street to the west. And Don, you're up. Uh, yes, good afternoon. Don Seaton, uh, City Planning Department. <coughs> Um, this uh, South Omaha Spring Lake CRA item on your agenda asks you to consider recommending the designation of a portion of the city as a community redevelopment area. That's, we refer to it as a CRA. Um, before I really get into it, I think I'll start with this map and uh, talk about uh, the general context of the area. Uh, state law allows us to designate up to 35% of the city's land area as a community redevelopment area. The areas in lavender here are already designated as CRAs, and they represent about 20% of the city's land area. The area we are looking at today specifically, and that's defined in your study, is located roughly right here. I'll have a more detailed map. You can see it's surrounded on three sides by existing CRA already. <clears throat> and here is the study area. We use census geography generally uh, to do our analysis. Uh, there are three block groups in Census Tract 25. We are including two of them in the study area, and that's the area that's recommended for designation. Now, to be eligible, for designation as a community. Well, the reason uh, we look at designating areas as CRAs is, is that we want to stimulate additional, maybe a faster pace of economic redevelopment opportunities in the area and see if we can get some more activity. This um, study was launched at the request of a developer who has a project in the area. Um, he hopes to use the TIF program and thinks he'll need to use the TIF program to make that project possible, and it is the availability of TIF within a CRA that is the primary purpose of, of designating a CRA. Uh, that property uh, the developer's interested in is along 13th Street down on this end of the study area. Um, under state law, a CRA is called an area that is uh, blighted and substandard. Not exactly a phrase we prefer in city planning. Uh, uh, we prefer to consider it an area that could use some additional economic incentives for redevelopment. But anyway, blighted and substandard is what we have to live with in the state law. And there are very long and specific, maybe a bit convoluted definitions of both of those terms. The study that you have in your packets and that's available to the public online has those definitions in full. Um, and you have to meet both of those definitions to be eligible for designation as a CRA. But, you know, you look at those definitions that are long and complex, really in a broad overview, um, a CRA is an area where the buildings and infrastructure are older, maybe a bit worn and substandard, and where the resident population is economically disadvantaged as compared to the rest of the city as a whole looking primarily there at things like per capita income and unemployment rates. Uh, I'll begin with the term blighted. And blighted part B has five criteria to it. And they are measurable criteria. Um, to be eligible, you only need to meet one of these criteria. Those criteria are population change, a stable and declining population, per capita income, where it's lower than the city overall, unemployment, where the unemployment rate is greater than the city overall, age of structures, 
structures, are they generally 40 years old or older? And are there subdivided and platted lands that have been not developed and sat platted for you know, a number of decades? Uh, in this instance, the study area meets two of the criteria. Per capita income for the city is $33,401. Uh, for the two block groups that we looked at, block group two and three, uh, the per capita income was 29000 and 17000 So it's considerably lower than the 33000 of the city's per capita income overall. In terms of the age of the structures, uh, 40 years is the threshold. Uh, the average age of the structures in this area uh, readily exceeds 80 years. So it, uh, the area qualifies in terms of meeting Part B blighted definition. Now, the um, definition of substandard and the Part A blighted, there's considerable overlap, but those focus more on the condition of the built environment. By that, I mean the infrastructure and the buildings within the area. You know, are they worn, are they older? And we have two tools that we use uh, to measure that. It's a little more subjective, I guess, than the uh, uh, quantifiable census data. But we use windshield surveys. We drive the area, take a look at uh, you know, each and every parcel, every street. So we do the windshield surveys. We also use the county assessor's building data. They have rankings of building conditions. And those rankings go from very good, good, average, fair, poor, and worn out. In this area, I'd say it was approximately 20% of the buildings were below the average ranking. In terms of the infrastructure and the windshield survey, um, the infrastructure is indeed substandard in many cases. Drainage is lacking. Some streets lack sidewalks. Lane widths are narrow. Pavement in some locations is deteriorated. And the road connect connectivity through the area, in part due to topography, is, is not ideal. So in terms of the physical environment and the substandard definition, planning staff also found this area to be meeting that definition. Um, with that, uh, our recommendation is that uh, you approve designation of this area as a community redevelopment area. Thank you, Don. Don, real quick, could you touch on the request for extremely blight? But that it, uh, uh, yes, yes. Thank you. There's also a, another level of blight that you can designate, and that's an extremely blighted area. That has two criteria, both of them are census data and very measurable. One is an unemployment rate that is 200% of the state overall state unemployment rate. So that threshold, 200% of the state unemployment rate, is 6.68%. In this area, we were under 1% unemployment, so it didn't meet the extremely blighted area criteria. The second criteria is <clears throat> poverty rate. Uh, if the population within the area has a poverty rate, more than 20% of the population is in poverty, uh, as measured by the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, then it's eligible. In this case, the two block groups had a poverty rate of 13% and 10.4%. So again, it did not meet the extremely blighted um, area criteria. But it does meet the community redevelopment area criteria. And that's where our recommendation is focused. Don, just on just a question on the, on the criteria, on the unemployment rate particularly. That's, that's, a, moving not, that's a moving number, right? Yes. So at what point in time do, do you what data do you look at at what point in time to determine We whether, use the most current is. data available, which for this study was the five-year American Community Survey data from the U.S. Census Bureau. And, you know, it, it's, it's a poor measurement at best. Yeah. And um, even at the census tract level, um, that five-year ACS data from the Census Bureau, there's a fair amount of play in terms of the uh, margin for error. When you get down to a smaller area like a block group, that margin of area error gets even bigger. So I'm always a little skeptical on the unemployment rate measurement. Yeah. 
regardless of what they come out to be. Yeah, I was curious because, uh, yeah, uh, you, it's, it could it's, change, it could change next month. Uh, it's in state law and we have to use the most current data available, but it, it really isn't a very good measure. Yeah. Okay, thanks. In my opinion. Thank you, Don. Don, I have a quick question for you. Yes, um, sir. Do these tracks ever stop being considered CRA once they're designated CRA? Um, it is possible for the city to take action. Once they're designated, they stay designated until the city council takes action to undesignate them or remove the designation. And I think we've only, I think there's only one occurrence of that, and that was the TD Ameritrade building out west. I think. Okay. Thank you, Don. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Any additional comments, questions? Eric, did you want to add anything? No, just thank you, Don, for that detailed uh, analysis on the process and, and criteria. Staff recommends approval of the CRA. Okay, do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. So Longo? Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Tate? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approve 7 0. Agenda item number 6, case C3 22 74. Applicant Planning Department on behalf of the City of Omaha request approval of the Shirley Tyree Theater <coughs> TIF redevelopment project plan. Location 2401 North 24th Street. And you're up again, Don. Uh, yes, uh, Don Seaton, City Planning. Um, the Shirley Tyree Theater TIF project is a building rehab project. It's located on North 24th Street, uh, just a little south of Lake Street. Uh, it's this, the project is comprised of this building and that lot and the vacant lot to the north. It is a historic building built in 1914, located in a historic district. Uh, the building had been used as a preschool for a while. It's been vacant for about three years. The building is going to be thoroughly rehabbed. There will be a new addition put on the east end of the building, the site plan. Uh, the addition is here. Addition would be about 4,300 square feet. Uh, the project's going to be a black box theater venue with flexible performance space, an audience capacity of about 190 people. It will include a ticket office, a scene shop, dressing rooms, and rehearsal space. Uh, the developer is uh, RH Land Management, LLC, managed by Susan Buffett. The uh, developer is providing this facility uh, once completed to the Union for Contemporary Arts, uh, rent-free. Total project investment is about $20.9 million. They are requesting $354,672 in TIF support. Project meets the required criteria of our TIF program. It's an appropriate land use for the area. I think it'll be a nice addition for North Omaha and it complies with the goals of the master plan. We ask for your approval. I, sh I should show a couple more pictures, I think. There's some renderings showing the project. This is from that same perspective as the photo with the existing building here and the addition to the east. Maybe a floor plan as well with the seating area. Any questions for Don? I'm sorry, I was reading part of the... Okay, thank you, Don. Any other proponents? Good afternoon, Michael Sands, 1700 Farnham Street. <coughs> Excuse me, Farnham Street, Suite 1500 on behalf of the applicant. Uh, with me are, uh, is uh, Bridget McQueen, who's the director of the, uh, the Union for Contemporary Arts. 
also Denise Chapman, who's the uh, uh, directs the theater programming and development over there. Uh, certainly, along with myself, they'd, they'd be happy to answer any questions that you have about their plans for the building. Um, just for a little more context. So the, the proposed site is um, directly to the south of the current union building. So it'll, it'll really be an extension of, of that programming. Currently, the union has uh, seating capacity capacity for about uh, 40 individuals, like Don said. Uh, this will increase it to 190, so it, it'll really uh, enhance the, uh, the capabilities of the union uh, to provide programming uh, you know, for, for the community uh, and, and to allow the community to, to come in and, uh, and see the programming in bigger numbers. Um, uh, as Don showed, it is a it is a historic building that'll be renovated. Uh, you know, it's not in the greatest condition now, so the renovations will be much needed, along with the addition. Um, and and I guess from our perspective, and I hope from yours, the project is is truly for the public benefit, um, which which I would argue is the best use of TIF. Um, and you know, with that, you know, we we've provided. Uh, uh, I think a, a pretty conservative valuation of what we think it'll value out at at 1.3 million dollars. Uh, it's it's sometimes tough with these kind of projects to provide valuations because there's not a lot of comps, and this won't be income uh, generating. So the income approach is is not easy to calculate. But at 1.3 million dollars, uh, we think that that will provide quite a bit of room and and is quite uh, conservative with respect to. The, the uh, 354,000 that's being being requested. Uh, we are asking for 20-year TIF. It is in an extremely blighted area, as as Don noted on the previous agenda item we went over. Um, with that, the goal is to be open by spring of uh, 2023, so about a year. Happy to answer any questions that you have, Michael. It's a nice project. Um, it is NBD, Neighborhood Business District. No parking stalls are required. 190 people. Have you talked to businesses, uh, people around the neighborhood? You know, when you're talking, maybe 95 cars coming. So the union already controls three parking lots um, that'll remain, uh, which would provide more than enough uh, parking even with the NBD, you know, the NBD designation doesn't necessarily require it, but yes, there is plenty of parking within a, a one block radius that the, uh, that the union already has the ability to use and will continue using. Okay. Can you point those, those parking areas out on that block? Um, and that might be a better question for Brigitte, but I believe it's, um, you have one over here, then you have one in between the union and is there one across the street? Yes, you bet. Uh, good afternoon, I'm Bridget McQueen. I'm the executive director at the Union for Contemporary Arts. Um, we do currently have three lots. Um, the largest of the lots sits um, to the north of the intended project between our current facility and the theater. Um, then there is a lot comfortably right. seated in the space. Thank you for that clarification. No trouble. Thank Were there any other questions for me? I'm good. Uh, anyone else? Okay, uh, thank you. I'll just say before you go, Brigitte, I just want to commend you and Denise. I see you back there and any other union staff that's here for your creativity and your vision and your commitment to strengthening such an important corridor in North Omaha, um, you should be commended over and over. And so I hope you just continue to shine with what you've done and then also this project. Thank you, Sydney. You're thank welcome. you so much. And thank you for your consideration. I do appreciate it. Bridget, thank could you. you just say uh, your address for the record? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, it's uh, 2423 North 24th Street. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none. Oh, nope, sorry. just okay. grab it. Please. Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, close public hearing. Additional comments, questions? Eric, did you want to add anything? Just, you know, there's a lot of exciting things happening on North 24th Street, yep. so this is another great example. So we're excited for this project to, to come through, come to fruition. Staff re recommends approval. Okay. Do we have a motion? Second. Debbie, we have a motion and a second. Please record the vote. 
Grossacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosenbaum? Yes. Approved. 7 0. Okay. Moving on, agenda item number seven, case C3 22 75, <clears throat> applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha. Request approval of the Flats on Howard Expansion TIF Redevelopment Project Plan. Location 2240 Landon Court and 2323 Howard Street. And Don, you're up again. Yes, making myself at home. Uh, Flats <laughs> on Howard Expansion TIF Project. Uh, two lots south and east of 24th and Howard and the, towards the western part of the Central Business District. Uh, it's comprised of two lots. One is presently a surface parking lot. The other is occupied by a building that has been that has been previously used by the Nebraska Urban Indian Health Center. Uh, they are moving to a new location. So the existing structure is going to be demolished, the site cleared, and a new six-story apartment building will be constructed. This is a massing study. And it's this property here. These are some existing buildings that give you a little context. Uh, six-story apartment building with uh, 120 market rate rental units. They'll be located on floors three through six of the building. Uh, the first two floors will have uh, will be two levels of parking, approximately 132 parking stalls. Um, those first two floors will also include the leasing office and a workout facility. This property, like the previous item, is located in an extremely blighted area, and they're requesting a 20-year TIF term, tax increment financing term, and the increment they're showing for the building does support that request. The developer is 2323 Howard Street, LLC. It's managed by Todd Hestead. Total project investment in the neighborhood in downtown is uh, approximately $27.9 million. They're requesting $3,282,000 in TIF support. And again, the project meets the required criteria of our TIF program. It's an appropriate use for the area, uh, complies with the goals of the city's master plan. Ask for your approval. I might show a couple more images here. Elevation, site plan, kind of a U-shaped or J-shaped building. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Any other proponents wishing to speak? Good afternoon. Greg Rothermel, New Style Development, 2223 Dodge Street, uh, here to answer any questions you guys have. Okay. Thank you, Greg. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Additional comments, questions? Eric, do you want to add? Recommend approval. Do we have a motion? Second. We have a motion and second. Debbie, please record the vote. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Tolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Agenda item number 8, case C3 22 76, applicant planning department on behalf of the city of Omaha, mm -hmm. request approval of the MH Landing Lot 5 TIF redevelopment project plan. Location 3321 South 72nd Street. <coughs> Don? You're up again, again, the last time. <laughs> yes. Uh, good afternoon again. Don Seaton, City Planning Department. The MH Landing Lot 5 TIF Redevelopment Project Plan uh, is a proposal for a new office building with some warehouse storage. Uh, it's located, uh, as mentioned, 3321 South 72nd Street. That's basically Grover and uh, 72nd. It's on the site, um, a very large lot previously that was occupied by the Ramada Inn Convention Center and Coco Keys uh, Water Park. You may recall, ignore the notes for a moment, a replat for this property that came through not too very long ago where that entire property was divided up into six lots and we approved a TIF project on this L-shaped lot that's a hotel. 
Lot five, and that's lot four. Lot five that we're looking at today is this parcel here. And um, that's intended to be a headquarters building uh, for Dan Merrick and his uh, Ho Merrick Hospitalities. Um, he's the one who has developed, is developing the hotel on lot four and has developed uh, numerous other hotels in the uh, Omaha, Omaha market at various locations. Okay, so the building will be a one-story building with basement, about 5,660 square feet. About 2,100 square feet of that will be, um, and that's all off, mostly office, about 2,100 square feet will be storage area. Um, it's kind of a support area for Mr. Merrick's uh, hotel operation. Um, total project cost is $2,689,000. They're asking for $390,000 in TIF support for a 15-year TIF term. Um, project complies with the master plan, and uh, we ask for your approval. Thank you, Don. Any other proponents? I see Brent headed this way. I think those are mine. You won't get far from them. No. Thank you, Brent Beller, 1140. Uh, West Center Road. Oh, those are yours then. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're not going far. Um, so the only thing I was going to touch on, Don did a good job. Uh, th this is kind of cool because Dan Merrick has done a number of hotels in and around the Omaha area. So now, and, and a lot of those hotels were supported by TIF, and he's actually relocating his business operations and his management company to Omaha. So with this building, you know, 25 new jobs will be coming. Um, so an, another good incentive as to why we use TIF. Um, there's always random benefits, and, and one of the benefits is new jobs here. So uh, we're excited about this. This is a phased uh, TIF project. There'll be maybe another one going on lot six, which won't be Mr. Merrick. He'll probably be a, a, an apartment developer. And then there'll be two more retail sites left over on this project. So um, with that, we're here for any questions. We appreciate uh, your support. Okay, Mr. Brent, any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Additional comments or questions? Re recommend approval. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sodlongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. We're going to take cases 12 and 24 together. Agenda item number 12, case C12-22-82, applicant, City of Omaha, request. Preliminary and final plat approval of Northeast Joint Use Facility 2, a minor plat inside city limits. Location, southeast of 20th and Ogden Street. And agenda item number 24 is case, <coughs> excuse me, Case C8-22-96, applicant, City of Omaha, request approval of a large project special use, <clears throat> special use permit to allow maintenance and service facilities over 10 acres in the GI district. Location, southeast of 20th and Ogden Streets. And who's presenting? Yep. Okay. Good afternoon. Dustin Shropshire. RW Engineering and Surveying, 7525 North 101st Street here in Omaha. Uh, with me today is Mike Eastman and Austin Rouser from Public Works to help answer any questions that you might have. All right. The proposed improvements um, are an expansion of the current joint use facility. The expansion will include a chain link fence along the perimeter of the property. The area within the fencing will include a 60 foot buffer yard of landscaping. Within the expanded area, there'll be no new buildings or significant improvements, only the storage of materials, including asphalt grindings, clean dirt, brick, rubble, rock, and granite curb. The landscaping requirements shall be met by providing a buffer and screening from adjacent residential uses. Traffic may include light duty and heavy duty trucks entering the, entering the site from the current property. So there's no expected uh, adverse 
uh, traffic on the surrounding streets. The hours of operation are going to remain consistent with the current operating hours. And um, if there's any other questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing. Comments, questions? Eric, did you want to add anything? Yeah, just mention a few things just to differentiate between the two. We'll have to take separate motions and votes. Um, agenda item 12 is the smaller two and a half acre that Dustin is showing with the site plan here, the expanded area. Uh, so that's you know creating one plat. There are some vacations of right of way, including Ogden, uh, portions of Ogden, 20th Street, and the East West Alley. Um, but there is a new North South Alley that's being provided. And of course, you see the, the new cul de sac on Ogden that provides turnaround for for access for the public. Um, agenda item 24 is major amendment to the assumed large project special use permit. Um, although this use is permitted in the industrial zoning because it's over 10 acres in size and it's a civic use, it requires that amendment for this new enlarged area to, in to include this two and a half acres with the larger site. So unless you have any questions, of course we have the experts here from Public Works with their facility. Um, I will make a recommendation for agenda item 12. Approval of the preliminary plat subject to compl compliance with all stormwater management ordinances and policies. Approval of the final plat subject to the condition of preliminary plat approval. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve of the preliminary plat subject to compliance with all stormwater management ordinance and policies and approval of the final plat subject to the condition of preliminary plat approval. I have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rose, uh, Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. For agenda item 24, staff recommends approval of the large project special use permit to allow maintenance and service facilities over 10 acres in size in the GI district, subject to the four conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? Motion approved the large project special use permit to allow maintenance and service facilities over 10 acres in the GI district, subject to meeting the, the four items in the staff report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Pate? Yes. Sodlongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Thank you. Thank you, Dustin. Hey. Agenda item number 22, case C8-19-159. Applicant, Kids Can Community Center. Request approval of a major amendment to the special use permit to allow a daycare general in the R4 district. Location, 4768 Q Street. And may we hear from the applicant, please. Hello, uh, Brian Ackert, uh, 119 South 48th or 49th Avenue. Just give a little background on the project. I'm here to answer any questions as well. Uh, but Kids Can Community Center originally came a couple years ago to get a special use permit uh, for a daycare use on this site. Uh, so we did go through that process, but at the time we didn't have quite all the design uh, specifics figured out. So here I am today to discuss signage um, for a major amendment to that special use permit. Uh, just a little bit of background on the site itself. Uh, the building is located here. Um, north is to the up this direction. Uh, 48th Street and Q is over on this side. Uh, the only spot that we can actually enter the site is off of Weir Street. Uh, you kind of come around the block there due to grade, uh, as well as a large stabilized slope and a retaining wall uh, that's over here off of 48th and Weir Streets. Uh, so what we're looking at doing is trying to get uh, any sort of visitors. Uh, if, uh, Kids Can Community Center, I should mention, there is uh, a daycare component, as well as a community center opponent and an after school, uh, out of school programming uh, that occurs at the, at the site as well. Uh, there's outdoor play spaces here as well as here, uh, but from that community center standpoint, we're trying to get visitors to get to the front door. Uh, so from a signage standpoint, uh, we do want to capture traffic. Uh, there's a large gymnasium that's located here along Q Street. So having two wall signs on either side of that to catch both sides of uh, uh, the Q Street traffic, uh, but then also a monument sign to identify the main entry uh, from a curb cut standpoint, then also a, a canopy sign right at the front door. So uh, looking at a few um, signage uh, elevations here, uh, this is the sign we're looking for. 
as well as a few uh, elevations. Again, this is the gem graphics over here on this side. Uh, this is the side that faces north, uh, so that canopy sign to kind of br bring visitors to the front door. And then we do have a couple of renderings as well to kind of show what that looks like in context with everything as well. So again, uh, large gem uh, that faces uh, Q Street, and then the front door is facing north uh, where the surface parking is located. So uh, happy to an answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Okay. Brian, Thank you. just a real quick question for you. I'm trying yeah. to find on the site plan here. How big yep. is that building going to be? Uh, about 27,000 square feet. 20, okay, yeah. that's pretty good size. Yeah, a little bit bigger than a typical R4 uh, building. So. Yeah, all right. Nice project, by the way. Thank you, Brian. Okay, thank you. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, we'll close public hearing. Additional comments or questions? Eric. Yeah, so Brian gave a, a good summary. Um, specifically, the, the following waivers are, are necessary. Total allowed sign budget, maximum allowed square footage per wall sign, overall height of a wall sign, and then minimum setback for a monument sign. Uh, with this being a civic use and residential zoning, the signage standards are um, fairly restrictive in our zoning code. That is something that we are um, potentially looking at modifying moving forward. Um, but for that reason, we are supportive of uh, three of the four waivers. The one that staff is not comfortable with is the setback for the monument sign. There's no, um, staff does not view the hardship or practical difficulty, so we are saying that that uh, monument sign in the northeast corner should meet the setback, but we are uh, comfortable with all of the other waivers. This would, um, if approved by the planning board, would also need to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for such waivers. You can ask questions as follow-up, but staff recommends approval of the major amendment to the special use permit to allow daycare general in the R4 district subject to the five conditions listed in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? I move approval of the major amendment to the special use permit to allow daycare general in the R4 district subject to the five conditions outlined in the recommendation. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Eight. Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Agenda item number 25, case C8 21 150, C8 21 158, C10 21 149. Apple. <coughs> Excuse me. Applicant Nebraska HBPA request approval of a major amendment to the special use permits assumed to allow indoor entertainment and outdoor entertainment in the GI district with approval of a major amendment to the large project special use permit assumed along with approval of the MCC overlay district property is located within the flood fringe and floodway overlay districts. Location, 6303 Q Street. And we hear from the applicant, please. Good afternoon, Lynn McNally appearing on behalf of the applicant, Nebraska Horseman, 6303 Q Street. Um, this uh, was already approved by you, if you recall. Uh, the change that we made is to add a parking garage. There were 1,421 stalls that were required on the site for the building that we're constructing. Uh, what we're planning on is 900 surface stalls and then an additional 700 in the parking garage. Um, due to the limitations of the property itself, we felt that this was the most efficient way to achieve the parking goal, to go above the parking goal, but still have room to move around and get done the things we needed to do, so. Okay. Any questions for Lynn? Thank you. Uh, timeline is we are anxiously awaiting the governor to sign rules and regs so we can get the license process going. Um, if he approves in the next month or so, which I'm hoping he will, then I would say that we would have uh, licenses in hand sometime in May, and we'll be breaking ground the moment that we have the license in hand. So we are ready, willing, and able to construct. Um, right now, actually, there's activity going on because um, you had already approved uh, dragging water and sewer out to the infield and electricity so that we can keep simulcasting going in temporary buildings on the infield while we gut the inside of the building and 
make it beautiful and new. So actually, if you drive by there right now, there's activity going on right now, which is very exciting for us. We, we can't wait. Um, Lincoln's on a similar timeline. Uh, we're we're going to be um, the construction trailers out there already. So we're just literally waiting for that license to be in hand and, and we'll be off and going. Can't wait. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did you. Did you give us that uh, Warhorse name previously or is that new? Um, that's, uh, it's incorporated from the whole time, but now we're officially going forward as Warhorse. Yeah, I thought it, I didn't remember seeing that before. Yeah, that yeah, name. yeah. Warhorse Lincoln, Warhorse Omaha. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Lynn. Any other proponents? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll co close the public hearing. Any additional comments, questions? Eric. Yeah, so Lynn gave a, a nice summary of, of the changes, um, so I don't need to rehash. You know, it was last June that you um, originally had the, the use permits. A uh, few items, you know, development team will continue to coordinate with us on the development or floodplain development permits. Um, there's an administrative plat that will be required with the adjacent property to the east, as well as a minor amendment. And then some finalization of um, acceptable urban design building codes related to the garage. So um, with that being said, we do have a lot of different conditions. It kind of repeats itself for the three different um, use permits. So we will, um, uh, Jennifer. Take them in three motions or? Yeah, I don't know if you have thoughts if we need three separate motions and votes or if I can just read them all together. We have, of course, there's the MCC overlay and then there's a large project special use permit. Then there's a special use permit for the indoor entertainment and then a special use permit for the outdoor entertainment. Let's just take them as three separate votes to okay. be safe. Okay. okay, sounds good. So. Um, I will loop the MCC overlay with the large project as the first motion. So staff recommends approval of the MCC overlay district and approval of the large project special use permit subject to the 13 conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the MCC major commercial corridor overlay district to, and also to approve the large project special use permit subject to the following 13 conditions in the report. Second. I have a motion and second. Debbie, will you please record the vote? Soto Longo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Okay. Staff recommends approval of the special use permit to allow indoor entertainment subject to the 13 conditions in the recommendation report. Okay. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the special use permit to allow indoor, indoor entertainment subject to the following 13 conditions. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. And the final one approval of the special use permit to allow outdoor entertainment subject to the 13 conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? The approval of the special use permit to allow outdoor entertainment subject to the 13 conditions outlined in the recommendation report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Agenda item number 26, case C8 22 98, C7 22 97. Applicant Chase Golick request approval of a major amendment to the large project special use permit assumed to allow meat packing and related industries in the HI district, along with approval of a parking adjustment for a mixed use development. Section 55-736, location, southwest of 33rd Street and Edward Babe Gomez Avenue. May we hear from the applicant, please. Trevor Vestrina with TD2-10836 Old Mill Road. Um, I'm here with the applicant, uh, Chase Golick. He's here to answer any questions as well. Uh, we're seeking the approval for a um, parking adjustment and a major amendment to the special use permit to construct a new cooler addition right here, 
as well as a new employee parking lot right here. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions if you've got them. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Um, any other proponents <coughs> wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents? Seeing none, I'll close public hearing. Additional comments? Yeah, we talked through most of the details um, in the pre-meeting. You know, as Trevor mentioned, the cooler addition as well as the parking, uh, new parking lot. Um, you know, just a brief overview of the parking. Uh, there is a lease agreement with the Guacamaya uh, Restaurant and Dance Club that's located southeast of the site. Uh, they have been leasing parking stalls from this restaurant since 2010, and they have extended that. And, um, you know, the times are complementary in, in, in different times for, for the meat processing facility as compared to the restaurant and um, dance club. So um, we are supportive of both the large project major amendment as well as the parking adjustment. If you have any questions on specific details, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, staff recommends approval of the parking adjustment for a mixed use development approval of a major amendment to the large project special use permit assumed to allow meat packing and related industries in the HI district subject to the seven conditions in the recommendation report. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve the parking adjustment for mixed use development and approval of a major amendment to the large project special use permit to allow meat packing and related industries in the HI district subject to the seven items in the staff report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Rosacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Eight? Yes. So Longo? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Agenda item number 29, case C14 22 102. Applicant Planning Board request vacation of a portion of alley, <coughs> alley right of way between. 12th and 13th streets and between Pierce and Pacific streets. Um, Eric, are you presenting? Or? Yeah, so I will start this off. Um, <clears throat> City Planning and Public Works had received a request from one of the adjacent property owners uh, to vacate this east-west um, alley, unimproved alley right away with a portion of the, basically the eastern half, I will roughly say, to go to the adjacent hardware facility with the western half going to the requesting party. In our recommendation report, um, we had originally stated that we felt the property at 1217 Pacific should um, be awarded, given, um, you know, vacated to that property that's adjacent. Um, since that time, we have received some correspondence. So I guess I would like to hear all the parties and you know, we can go from there on some okay. of the further details. Sounds good. Do we have any other proponents wishing to speak? Tom Melisma. Uh, 1103, 1107, 1109. 1109 is the adjacent property to the alley. I am the one that uh, started this process and I'm here to answer any questions. This property is, is yours. Yeah, do you have a map yeah. with you? Or? For sure. these three properties okay. the alleyway right there. Yeah, so Tom owns all three properties that are fronting 13th Street. Yep, okay. All right, any questions for Tom? Tom, I have a, I have a question. Yeah. What if, if this area was vacated, do you have intentions for the, the alley right away or just to, for ownership? Yeah, ownership basically, you know, I mean, if it's able to be developed and, you know, if we can, as I own that property, if, if later on down the road, if I can develop that area, for sure. Okay, thank you, Tom. Any other proponents wishing to speak? Seeing none, are there any opponents?
Good afternoon, Ron Hackett, 3515 Oak Ridge Road, RGH Design, architect for the project right adjacent to Tom's place at 1217 Pacific Street. And I'm not necessarily against the vacation of the alley. I'm more just concerned that we maintain access to our property through that alley. We have, um, in the design of the new structure that is being built, we've designed where the red dot is there is is the alley side, and that's where the transformer will be for the project. Um, currently, the screen walls that are poured in place concrete are already in place as well, as, well as the trench and conduit for the power that gets there. Um, just concerned about access for maintenance in the future and access for being able to build our project that is uh, really, it's a tight site and uh, the alley is, is crucial for the builders to get back there and to bring materials in and out of the site. Um, as well, Tom, not sure who's, what's this gonna cost? Um, I'm all for building and I'm all for Tom to develop something. I think that'd be great. Um, just, but, uh, but shutting off access is a, is a big concern. So that's, that's what I'm up to today and, and uh, just something I think we all need to discuss. Access right now is on Pacific Street, right? We have the the main entry for the project is off of Pacific Street, which is on this side, and the main driveway in. The main entry is right here, and uh, then we get up and into the building. And like I said, the red dot is where our, our transformer will be, and in the future, OPPD will probably need to get to that and or replace it somewhere down the road. And, mm -hmm. and, and you're, excuse me, is, and, and is your parking going to be on street then? Uh, parking is actually underneath the building. This is all parking on here, and this is, uh, the, the building actually floats, if you want to say that. It, it's appeared to float above the parking. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So. Yeah, Ron, um, which, which way does that transformer face for access? For What's that? Access? Oh, for them to open it? Yes, they have to have that clearance in front of the yeah. transformer so we have the clearances around it it's just we have these are shielding screen walls that are more poured there. likely it'll open to the OPPD will set it to the south more than likely that, that's my that's exactly my point yeah because then they have to have access through that to that location they w they would right now we it's building that's all above it so yeah but it's an alley now so they they could get to it the only way to it, it would be the alley, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. Good point there. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, uh, Ron, I have a few questions. Is, yes. s remind me, how many units again? Six. Okay, six. Um, I have heard, does the building encroach into the current alley right away? We have this particular stem wall was poured eight inches into the alley. And currently, this hatched part is a lease that we have set up with the city for a sidewalk back there. And I visited with Ryan Hawes about it. He was fine with us incorporating that little eight inch stem wall into the lease, or we can cut it off. It does nothing other than it's a screen. Okay, that's a sidewalk or steps back there that you have the lease for? Yes, or this is the lease. Do you have the lease yet, or is it? Yes. Okay, okay. I knew that was a comment from the building permit. Um, so you can either, well, if the right of way was vacated, of course that could become your property. But if not, you're saying that it can either be incorporated into the lease or it could be cut off? That's right. It's, okay. it's just a screen wall, it's concrete. We just take a saw and cut it off. So. Okay. And uh, yeah, it was a mistake that uh, the foundation company poured it eight inches out into the alley. Don't know why. So, okay. yeah. So in the case of a, that's better than what we thought. I could ask a question, Eric. If, in, in the case of a vacation, if there's a uh, standing lease like that, does that go with that? With that vacation, does it continue, or what happens with that lease? Well, the lease would have effectively go away if it becomes part of their property. I mean, that would be my understanding. I don't, you know. Well, no, I'm saying if, if a third party acquired the, the alley. So you're saying if the requesting party, Tom, right. was given that portion of the alley, 
Uh, well, that complicates things because mm -hmm. there's no longer a, a lease agreement with the city because we're not the owners of the alley anymore. But sometimes leases move along, you know, with with a change in <clears throat> title. I'm not aware of any transfer of city leased property to a private company. I will look to the law department for any other <laughs> thoughts or opinions and say, yeah. If we no longer own the property, there's no mechanism by which that any existing lease would transfer. I just don't understand it because if I own a property and that has some sort of a lease on it, it's, you have the option to either sell that with a lease in place or not. Uh, so but the, the city has different rules with how we lease our property pursuant to city code, so those, that doesn't always necessarily transfer in the same manner. That's one of my questions. We might have others here to, to speak on this, but I guess let me just give a just touch on the process. So this is on the agenda as a planning board initiated uh, vacation, which means that um, through that process, you know, planning board, city staff making recommendation, ultimately city council approving, has the ability to divide up the, the vacated area in any manner that they see fit, okay? So when you have a petition-based vacation request, that would be when, um, let's say you had 100% of the abutting property owners to the right of way requesting that to be vacate, vacated. It's automatically split 50-50 based on the adjacent ownership. That's also the way it's done when you have a plat, uh, when a vacated area is, is included in the plat, unless somebody is signing their, their rights away by signing the plat. Um, so it's kind of unique, and, and that was part of our recommendation report. We had talked about splitting up so that it didn't all go to um, Tom, you know, the property owners along 13th Street, but rather have that segment go to 1217 uh, Pacific. But, you know, we obviously had some concerns about hearing that maybe the building was in that alley. Um, and then obviously we hear concerns about accessing and the transformer. So um, I guess I'd continue and, and hear who else has to speak on it. Thank you, Ron. Are there any other opponents wishing to speak? Cindy Christensen, 1216 Pierce Street. I just want to express my concern that my property is the back of that will be split then the alleyway between Johnson Hardware and it's behind the, the new construction. And so maintaining that with two different property owners is my concern. Uh, the Pierce Street is quite steep. Okay. This is my house right here, 1216 Pierce. And so it's just the, the maintaining the property between uh, the different owners. This is Johnson Hardware which on this map looks like they will own most of it. But that's my concern is where that, where that ownership will be. So this map represents the original request. And so the, the green area would go to Johnson Hardware. The blue area was asked to go to Tom Elizabeth. Okay, and, that's, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I just wanted to um, find out who's gonna be responsible for maintaining that because of the steepness of that alleyway. Okay, thank you. Any other opponents? Uh, I'm sorry, I couldn't get here any earlier, but uh, my name's John Schmidt, uh, 1940 South 49th Street, and I'm the owner of 1226 Pierce Street. And I believe you all received my email uh, it was forwarded to you that I am interested in purchasing uh, my half. Uh, apparently, I'm allowed to have half of that 
20 foot right away and um, uh, and, and that's what I am requesting that uh, apparently it gets appraised and uh, the adjacent property owners get a chance to purchase that vacated alleyway and I want to uh, do that which is adjacent to my property. And uh, uh, the green air, the green section here is, is Johnson Hardware getting all of that or? That was the request. Yes. And, and that's okay with all four of these property owners? On I, the don't know. I don't know if there's anybody else to come up and speak. Yeah, we don't um, know that yet. So. But yeah, we did notify all of the adjacent property owners with, with this request, so mm -hmm. I'm not sure. So uh, I believe my property is 87 feet deep. So uh, what I would be requesting then is 87 feet times the 10 foot width. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Okay. I think that's uh, what you're asking for, yeah. 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 And that's that's all I have. So. Okay. Thank you, John. Any other opponents? Hi, Jamie Trobaugh, 1220 Pierce Street. And so this is my property here. Um, generally, I'm... Generally, Tom and his wife have been good neighbors. The architects have been very responsive to our concerns throughout this whole process. Um, but in general, when public lands are being vacated, um, I, I would like to see it divided evenly among the properties interested, uh, rather than it going to one wealthier uh, development entity um, as it stands, the red transformer that you saw earlier on one of the maps is right, just about right up against my fence line there. And um, so I, I would feel that uh, my husband and I should have access to some of that land as well, if we wished it. Thank okay. you. Thank you, Jamie. Any other opponents? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing. Yes, Tom, did you want to come up and? Yeah. So, again, Tom Malisma, 1103, 1107, 1109, South, South 13th Street. So when this whole case, this came about, I was put in touch with Crystal Roberts, who helped guide me through this whole process. And initially, I, we thought we had to go, I'd had to go through a petition and go to all the neighbors. And to, to come to find out, um, with what we found out with them building over the property line um, and they did a little bit more investigation with some other properties up the line with there was fences built over the prop over into the alleyway as well that we wouldn't need to do the petition um, then it came to, and then I thought well okay great then it, all the properties would get split up equally well no that's not the case the way it was explained to me was that I'd have to buy purchase the entire alleyway and then I would divvy it up amongst whoever wanted it so you know in, in about each of the properties to buy that portion for the pier side the smaller properties I'd imagine they're going to be somewhere between 15 to two thousand dollars per piece to buy it's going to add to your your taxes um, I wasn't for sure because I was trying to get on this month's um, meeting I wasn't for sure if everybody would come to agreement on that so I have um, some emails with crystal explained to her that maybe it's just easier if, if I went to Johnson I knew I knew Johnson's owner if we can just split the cost and then I would be willing to go back at the on the backside and then let whoever wanted to buy their portion I didn't want to really have it all jogged up if possible if we could come to agreement after the fact um, but of course yours is an easy one that you're 10 foot it sounds like the the, the value is usually around three to three to 25 per square three dollars and 25 cents per square foot so um, I think after the fact I am 100% fine with chopping up th this piece as is. Um, so it, ho hopefully that answers your, your, your questions. Yeah. And, and, and along with yours, like if you wanted to, if you guys needed to buy 10 foot of, of that section, totally fine. We just thought it would be a lot easier to do it all after the fact. It, so I, I, I've got a question with regards to the, to the property to your, I guess it would be your east, east there. Then if they need access to that transformer, yep. 
in there even if you did do that and you decided at some point in time to start building or develop that area then mm -hmm. how would they get the access to that transformer so what is your what's your side yard between Johnson and and your building <laughs> five feet yeah um, how big is the transformer Um, so there's access in terms of changing it out would be an issue. Yeah, that would be the issue of changing it out. So, um, you know, I, the only way I'd see it, which I had to use on my project quite a bit, was cr like a crane to get a, to and move so, something around. And so you initiated this. Yes. This right. Yep. What was your what was the purpose of the initiation to Because well, I'm looking at it right now, saying, just leave it vacated. Right, right. And that it's, there's so many parties in this thing; it just makes more sense to leave it vacated at this point. So, leave it as right. Yeah, right leave right. it as right away there. Right. So the, the other question. So let me let him answer that question though first. Um, what you know, I think that initiate. Why did you initiate? I, initi I initiated because it it just seems like the alleyway is so it's underutilized. It's it's just kind of land sitting there. Um, it's not. It's never accessed other than during your construction. Um, so. I was just thinking that it would be, you know, better use to, to sell it off, the city selling it to us, becoming, uh, you know, taxed land, and uh, someday, you know, developing that land into something. Yeah. All right. Okay. Now, with an alley in place, isn't there a, a utility easement down that alley anyway for the for power? Public Works would retain, yeah. if vacated, Public Works would re retain all utility easements in place. It would then re still uh, retain access to that? Well, that's that's to allow the city access to the utilities. That doesn't allow private members to OPPD. use it for access. OPPD. Ryan Haas is shaking his head, OPPD. So we have Ryan Haas and Crystal Roberts from Public Works if we do want to call them up. Yeah. Well, I know but if I encroach on the, on the uh, utility easements on my own property and I put something on there, the utility, if it's in the way, has the right to take it out because I, I'm supposed to keep that area clear. Can I just make a suggestion? There's a lot of questions here, and rather than <laughs> us trying to get into the weeds and work this out, work this out on all the different things, I think the best thing is maybe to do a layover and let the planning department work out a lot of these questions and then bring it back to us. Yeah. We're, we're getting uh, we're getting into the weeds a little bit here. Well, and absolutely, I was going to to lay to recommend layover. Um, you're getting to the point though where it almost makes sense to do the 50-50 uh, or the petition. Um, you need 75% ownership, I believe, right, Crystal? Yeah, 75% of abutting uh, property owners to sign on. I mean, you're you might be there. <laughs> I mean, it sure sounds like it. That would divide up. That would take care of, um, I mean, it doesn't take care of the access to get to the transformer. I don't know. I'd have to, you know, to speak further with Ron. So, yes, mm -hmm. I agree the layover makes sense. If everybody wants to come in and meet with planning and public works, that's probably uh, the best case because um, it's not going to get figured out today as we sit here. I'm going to close the public. I already did close the public hearing. Any additional comments or questions? Eric, did you want to add anything? I was just going to ask Ryan or Crystal, did you want to add anything? Or we can recommend a uh, layover, and hopefully we can all get together and meet. So um, they shook their heads no, so yeah. staff recommends layover. Do we have a motion? Motion to layover. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, will you please record the vote? Franklin? Yes. Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Solongo? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approve, 7 0. Good luck, guys. I think you Maybe if everybody could come down and <laughs> provide an email on a back of that agenda, and then we can help <laughs> the outreach. Thank you. Okay. Do we have a motion uh, for approval on last month's uh, pre meeting minutes and public meeting minutes? Move to approve the pre meeting. Public meeting minutes from March 22. Second. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, will you please record the vote? Moore? Yes. Morris? Yes. Haight? Yes. Sotolongo? Yes. 
Grossacker? Yes. Franklin? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0. Do we have a motion for adjournment? Motion adjourned. We have a motion and a second. Debbie, please record the vote. Morris? Yes. Tate? Yes. Sotomongo? Yes. Grossacker? Yes. Franklin? Moore? Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved 7 0.